morning, this morning, we're dealing with, as you already know, the purpose of prayer, part three today. Part three is read the wheel. Read the wheel. Let me share a story before I give you the text talk and the takeaway. Hang in there. Personal story. A little bit of a uh, moment of transparency. I am the executor of my parents' estate. <laughs> That word estate, don't be mistaken. Estates can uh, have very little or a whole lot. <laughs> In this case, it's neither because it's none. <laughs> but at any rate, when my father passed, uh, sitting at his uh, dying bedside, he made me the executor of the estate. And we had to establish a will. We had to establish a will. Uh, and in the will, it then delineated and distributed uh, what uh, he had and uh, what my mother, who had deceased much earlier, what they had, and it's saying this goes to this person, this goes to that person, and we all put it in the will. Hold that thought. Let's read the text. The text is Matthew 6 and 10. In the sixth chapter of Matthew, here in this pericope portion of the chapter, Jesus is teaching his disciples about prayer. That's where we've been all week. 6 and 10 says this, your kingdom come, your will be done. You already know that is the manner of prayer. We call it the Lord's prayer, simply the manner of prayer that he's teaching, the way of prayer, not the sold uh, way that we should pray. Just the manner. It's the, the shell. Now, in this little part that we get wrapped around, your kingdom come, your will be done. Many people will tell you, that to pray the will of God is a cop-out. Yeah, many people in uh, in word church tradition, which I am in and believe in speaking the word, will say, now don't, you know, when you pray the will, you need to pray the word. You, you're giving up. Let me help you and give you some revelation this morning. Let me give you some revelation. Read the will. Four things I'm going to tell you with respect to reading the will and knowing the purpose of prayer and what God will do for you when you read the will. Understand this, the will or the testament is God's word. <laughs> the will or the testament, we have the Old Testament, we have the New Testament. When a person reads the will, they read their testament or their testimonial of their life, the obituary of their life. God's word is his will or his testimony of what he will do. So there are four things you need to understand when you pray, when it comes down to the will and praying the will of God. The first thing is this, you got to know the will <laughs> so that you might be able to receive what God has. You got to know the will. The will is his word. So when I say thy will be done, no, not just, not just openly just throwing that out. Oh, the will of God. No, I know what I am saying. Study to show thyself approved of God. A workman rightly dividing the word of truth need it not be ashamed. So when I pray the will, I'm not just throwing that blanket statement out there because I don't know what to say. I am saying that because I do know what to say. The second thing is speak his will. I can't speak what I don't know. The power of life and death is in the tongue. Many times in our prayer lives, we pray what we want to say and not what he has said. Therefore, that's why we have this throwaway line when we when we are prayer. And that's why many say, don't pray the will. No, I need you to read the will. <laughs> read the will. Here's the will. Let me show you the will. Let me get my word out here. Here's the will, baby. Here's the will. So I know the will. I speak the will. I believe his will. That's the third thing. I believe his will. Believe it and you shall receive it. Believe it and you shall receive it. I know it. I speak it. I believe it. Here's the fourth thing. Do his will. Faith without works is dead. You can pray until uh, Jesus come. But if you don't do nothing, 
if you don't make a move, if you don't act, let me help you understand something. Now, when we talk about believe in James and whenever we talk about believe in God, what the Greek has to do with, there is no separation between the cognitive belief and the doing. I want you to understand that because many times we say, you know what, uh, I, I, you know, uh, I have faith. No, when we say you believe, that word in scripture means also I am acting. I am acting on the belief. In other words, I cannot have a cognate thought that I believe, know, and speak without doing, without doing. So when I pray, when I pray, I am now, what am I doing? I am acting on what I believe because I know. Why? Because I have sat at his feet and heard him read the will. That's his will. This is will. So when we say that in Matthew 6 and 10, your kingdom come, your will be done. Absolutely. Absolutely. Everything, everything I need to happen according to the will because I'm speaking his will. Now, here's the takeaway. I want you to grab this. I want you to grab this. Here's the exclamation point, the gem at the end. Every time you read the word, you read the will of promises that will take place in your life. Every time you read the word, you need to, you need to, you need to understand something. Every morning you sit and you read the will. You know how the lawyer calls everybody in and says, here is the will. And they read the testament of the person. And this is what they will know in the morning. Read the will. Read the wheel, <laughs> see what the promises that God has for your life that will take place in your life. The Lord be with you today. May his face shine upon you. Give you peace. Share the manna. Don't keep it to yourself. See you tomorrow morning as we keep unpacking the purpose of prayer. And today, the purpose of prayer is that you read the wheel. God bless you. Share the manna. See you tomorrow morning. Bye now.